Essex County College family. We hope that you're doing well. We hope that your family is doing well during this time. Thanks for tuning in to Essex County College Virtual Cafe. This is episode seven, and today we're going to be taking a virtual excursion to Mars. Yes, the planet Mars. Now, any excursion to Mars for us at this point is going to be virtual, but today we're going to be doing it together online, and we hope that you learn something about this planet today. We have an exciting week of activities lined up for you on the virtual cafe this week. So today we're doing Mars. Tomorrow will be a replay of our second episode, our virtual walkthrough of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. On Wednesday, we're going to be have a virtual museum tour of the National Museum of Natural History. On Thursday, we're going to have Chess 101. Learn how to play chess if you're a beginner. Pick up some new tricks if you are not a beginner. And Friday, we're going to have Coffee Hour, Coffee Talk. So come by, bring your favorite drink with you, have a chat with Student Life staff, talk about whatever you, whatever's on your mind. We're here. And thank you for tuning in again. So we're going to get started with our virtual excursion to Mars. All right, here we are. Let's check it. T minus five, four, three, two, one. Hi, I'm Katie, NASA JPL research scientist hey, on the Katie. Curiosity mission. Welcome to Mars. All right, so here we have the Curiosity rover. This is the device that was built to explore this planet and to chart most of its uncharted territory. So let's take a look here. Curiosity's wheels are twice the size of wheels on previous rovers, helping it handle rougher terrain. On flat ground, Curiosity has a top speed of four centimeters per second. Curiosity's robotic arm contains various instruments to measure rock and soil composition, brush dust away from rocks, take imagery, and even drill into rocks. Okay, so this is clearly some next level technology. They built an amazing device here that's mobile, that is like a futuristic device like I've never seen. And it's capable of roaming around the planet and taking pictures. Curiosity's two large analytical instruments inside its chassis can analyze rock, soil, and atmosphere samples. These measurements help unlock the history of Mars, revealing that Mars would have been habitable in the ancient past and also had the basic ingredients for life. Something to think about there. So this planet had the may have had ancient life it had the basic ingredients for life it has it shows signs that it was it is or was habitable interesting to think about because for so long we're taught that earth is the only planet that had life on it but clearly mars can sustain life here what kind of life we don't know but let's continue learning about the rover itself there are seven different cameras on curiosity's mast two pairs of black and white navigation cameras, two color mast cams, and ChemCam, which uses a powerful laser to vaporize small pieces of rock from up to seven meters away. ChemCam captures and analyzes the flash of that vaporization to measure the rock's chemical makeup. All right, so we have a giant supercomputer on wheels here. This is pretty amazing. Let's check out the tail. Curiosity's UHF antenna sends large amounts of data to satellites orbiting Mars, which then send the data to Earth. In a typical day, Curiosity will return around 50 megabytes of data. Thank you, Katie. Very informative. All right, so clearly that antenna is how we keep in touch with the rover so it can communicate back with us and show us what it's recorded. All the terrain around you has been created using real data and images from Curiosity. By taking photos with two side-by-side -side cameras, we can reconstruct the terrain in 3D. 
Wow. This photo, taken from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, shows the landing site where you're standing now. It also shows where other parts of the landing system ended up, like the rocket-powered descent stage and the parachute. All right, let's get started here. Bear with me as we navigate. Oh. Some areas are black and white because they were only photographed by Curiosity's lower resolution navigation cameras. Frequently, Curiosity has to move on before it can photograph everything with its higher resolution mast cams. Well, we're going to go ahead and forgive the Curiosity rover about the low resolution images because the work that it's doing is clearly some next level stuff and we appreciate it. All right, so we are at the landing site, and now we're going to check out Harump Hills. All right, it's quite a bit away, so we're going to use the shortcut and not try to drag you there. All right, here we go. Okay, so all these photographs are from 2015, pretty recent, about five years ago. I'm not sure how often we take pictures on Mars, but recent enough for me. It literally looks like a planet from Star Wars. It's unbelievable how beautiful it is. Nothing. Absolutely nothing here except for stuff that we put here. All right, let's check it out. Sedimentary rocks in this area appear to have formed in the presence of water. Scientists think this could have been the bottom of a lake billions of years ago. The bottom of a lake, huh? So we had lakes here, we had water. Look at this terrain. It's very, very similar to Earth. Interesting. Billions of years ago. So is it possible that there was life here billions of years ago? Was there an ancient civilization before our time? We'll never know, but we can try and look at this planet of pretty much this giant fossil of a planet that we can maybe deduce some theories from about the kind of life that may have lived here based on what was supported due to, you know, ge geographic resources and whatnot. Curiosity analyzed several samples in this area using its drill and instruments. Minerals found here suggest that the chemistry of this lake was changing. This suggests that environments on Mars capable of supporting life varied over time. Yeah, so this is once again supporting a theory that there clearly was something on Mars a long time ago. What was it? Was it human? Was it some type of human and otherworldly species hybrid? Was it just some other species? Very interesting because it doesn't seem to be any uh, foundations of structure or buildings. Let's learn about the arrival a little bit. Curiosity arrived in Pahrump Hills in September 2014. It began conducting a walkabout of the area, the same way geologists on Earth do field work. It surveyed the area. Then scientists chose which sites to examine more closely. Okay, and I'm guessing the sites they chose to examine more closely are the areas that the rover has highlighted for us to examine and explore. Let's, um, let's head over here by this mountain with a little water. So. Yeah. Wow. So vast. So beautiful. Sometimes nothingness can be beautiful and this really is awesome. I take a look around, just trying to imagine what type of life maybe lived here. What do we got here, Mount? Let's take a look. Pahrump Hills is at the base of Mount Sharp, a major objective for Curiosity. From orbit, 
we have seen layers of minerals reaching from the floor of Gale Crater to the foothills of Mount Sharp. By climbing up the slope layer by layer, Curiosity can reveal clues about the history of Mars and its potential ability to support life. Interesting. Yo, how you been? Hey, what's happening? Not much, Dan. Nice. We're checking out Mars, man. Yeah, see? Crazy. Mm-hmm. All right, so we are moving on. This is Pahrump Hills, and now we're going to be moving on to Area 3 once the map comes up. All right, we're moving on to the Marius Pass, which is about 10.8 kilometers away from the second site we just visited. Here we go. We can get this from, Jim. This is right on Google. This is, uh, yeah, this is accessmars.withgoogle.com. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, so they built this giant uh, robot that is on wheels that explores the planet and takes pictures of everything very slowly. It just keeps roaming the planet. It's called the Curiosity Rover. And that's what they've designed the tour with. So we're basically following the rover and the pictures it's taken on its journey mm -hmm. through Mars here. So let's see what we got. This is the third section of Mars that scientists have chosen. Curiosity spent all of June 2015 parked in this spot because Mars and Earth were on opposite sides of the sun. When this conjunction happens, radio signals between Mars and Earth become unreliable, so commands aren't sent to Curiosity. Okay, so they have a limited window of time to talk to the Curiosity rover as it runs around the planet here. All right, let's learn some more stuff. Oh. Curiosity arrived in Marias Pass on May 20th, 2015. Here, a younger layer of sandstone sits atop an older layer of mudstone, potentially preserving clues about ancient changes in the Martian environment. Okay. Mudstone, sandstone. Now, for those of you just tuning in, what we've learned so far about Mars is there are a lot of there's a support system here for life. There was potentially life here billions of years ago. There is bodies of water. There are mountains. So this is pretty crazy. Let's check this out. Curiosity took this selfie here in August 2015. Observations like this are used to monitor dust deposits, wear on the rover's wheels, and other signs of aging. Yeah, so that robot is a beast. I don't know who built it. But it's awesome. It covers the whole planet. It took pictures of everything. This is actually, they didn't photograph the entire planet. It's the rover photographs portions of it, and then they come up with a giant image of what they think the surface of Mars looks like based off of samples of different areas of it. This target is named Buckskin. A sample drilled here showed high levels of silica which could be promising for preserving organic material. It also showed traces of the mineral tritomite, which was left behind by volcanic activity. Left behind by volcanic activity. So you're telling me there's a volcano on Mars. Sounds brutal. Levels of silica, again, these are just more items on the list that are proven to me, I don't know about you, that there was life here at some point. We have no proof of, we have no recording of it except for the evidence left on the planet itself. That there was people here, I don't know what they were doing. I don't know if there are people, animals that look like people, aliens, whatever the case may be, something definitely was here because this planet didn't just have all these resources to support life for no reason, right? So all our lives we, we were taught that Earth is the only planet to sustain life. Obviously we know that's not true and we know that Mars clearly had something going on a hell of a lot earlier than we did. I wonder what was here. Continue looking around here. This target is named Buckskin. A sample drilled here showed high levels of silica, which could be promising for preserving organic material. It also showed traces of the mineral which was left behind by volcanic activity. 
All right, so they have small sections of Mars kind of roped off here for us to examine because otherwise it's a lot of the same throughout the entire planet. Uh, this is probably how Earth looked long before there was a McDonald's every 10 feet and a Starbucks. So let us check out section four, Murray Bites, about 14.1 kilometers away. Murray Butts, Batez. Here we are, let's check out some info on this. Bruce Murray. The Murray Buttes are named after the late Bruce Murray, Buttes. a Caltech planetary scientist and director of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. He worked on NASA's first missions to Mars and laid the groundwork for future Mars exploration. All right, so that's how they name a lot of this stuff as we do name things here on this planet after someone's last name we discovered it. All right, we got you. Let's learn some more about Murray Buttes, or however she said it. So again, that's, yes, this is clearly water here. These are mountains. This was made for habitation. Who lived here? All right, let's check out some stuff. These are the Murray Buttes. Buttes are steep, knob-like rock formations. The largest one here is about as tall as a three-story building. These buttes served as Curiosity's entryway to its main destination, Mount Sharp. And we visited Mount Sharp earlier, okay. A little closer to the two buttes. These buttes are really buttes. Wow. Imagine sleigh riding down this hill in Mars. I wonder if they get snow here. These buttes are similar to ones you'd find on Earth, formed when wind erodes ancient sandstone. Scientists have compared the region to Monument Valley. Okay. Ancient sandstone. This is phenomenal. Wow, in such detail, even these are, it, they have warned us earlier that there would be low resolution pictures, but you can see everything pretty good. Let's see how far we can get around here. Why is there no life here anymore? That's the question you need to ask yourself. There clearly was at one point. One thing we learned today was that there was volcanic activity that has left residue on this planet. Was there a volcano? Was there life here that maybe that volcano destroyed? We don't know. Well, let's head back to the landing site and see if maybe there's something we missed. We're back in Pahrump Hills, checking out some of the terrain on the planet Mars. For those of you just tuning in. That's water or oh, that's sand. So the gray. the gray here is just a little bit of sand. Yeah, that's sand. That's yeah, it's just discolored planet. But there was body there was some patches on the other side. Oh, okay. Let's take a look at this. Curiosity analyzed several samples in this area using its drill and instruments. Minerals found here suggest that the history of this lake was changing. This suggests that environments on Mars capable of supporting life varied over time. See, so this is, okay, Lou, so this is a lake here that we're looking at. It just has rocks in it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so there was water here. There was volcanic activity. There is silica. There are tons of elements that we find on Earth that are on this planet and yet we see no life here. So there must have been some type of extinction level event that happened on Mars a long time ago. Because there yes. clearly, clearly was something going on here. Mm. Let's see if we can get back to the landings. All right, these pictures are a little older. A lot of the other pictures we've seen are from 2015. These are from 2012. Let's back up mm -hmm. a little here. It also shows where other parts of the landing system ended up, it like the rocket-powered descent stage the and the parachute. Yeah. So as you can see here, here is the Curiosity rover once again. 
This thing is awesome. It roams around the entire planet taking pictures. Yeah. Let's see what's on the front end here. Hey, they take the samples too from there? Curiosity is oh, yeah. robotic that, arm. Yep, that's the on the ground uh, representative from Mars. Rock right and soil composition. Brush dust away from rock. Yeah, so this is like a complete package. It can drill, it can um, dust off things, take pictures. It's kind of like its own little scientist, but it's a robot and it goes around the entire planet. It's amazing. Yeah. Wow. So as you can see, folks, a lot of nothing here on Mars, but there is a tail loop we told here because of the residue that's found on this planet, because of the water that's found on this planet and other signs that support life may have supported it a long time ago. Get one of these. Water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some areas are black and white because they were only photographed by Curiosity's lower resolution navigation cameras. Frequently, Curiosity has to move on before it can photograph everything with its higher resolution mast cams. Yeah, once again, excellent piece of technology here. I wonder if there are other devices like that that put on other planets. We'll have to do some research and find out. Let's see if there's anything we missed on the map here. Yeah. I'm going to go back to the buttes. Yes, yeah, so as you can see, this thing has came pretty much in a couple different places on it, but it's got this tall yeah. one here that's able to take really large dynamic pictures of the, a lot of the scene wide shots that you see of the mountains. 